Hi, I'm Rishti Max and I'm here to share my look for day two of the Soundwave Festival. I based my makeup on Soundgarden and Faith No More, so I've used some yellow and green from the garden part of Soundgarden and some red and black to represent Faith No More. I think the makeup kind of ended up looking a little Rastafarian instead, but I enjoyed how it came out anyway. Okay, it's day two and mighty hell, it's even hotter today. So I had to put up my hair and get it well away from my face to give me some breathing room. And I even used this McDonald's Happy Meal Toy Barrette bow to keep my twists off my neck too. A really crucial step is to make sure to hydrate your body and drink lots of water before and during the festival. And also to get some tunes rockin', which I think totally helps you do your makeup faster. It's very important. And yes, I still have my old giant hard drive iPod, and its motto is, you touch, I buy. Then on to skin prep. I'm using these simple sensitive skin cleansing facial wipes to remove the excess oil and crud off my face. So my skin products go on clean skin and to make sure my makeup stays on hardcore. Then I used La Roche Posay Thermal Spring Water to spritz my face to give my skin a drink too, which is really refreshing, let me tell you. After cleansing my skin, I need to add back some skincare stuff. So since I wanted a glowing skin look, I moisturized with Max Strobe Cream, which I don't it on my face and rubbed into my skin with clean fingers of course. Then for my eyes, I use Clinique Repairwear Laser Focus Wrinkle Correcting Eye Cream. I take a bit on the tip of my finger, then dab that lightly over the delicate eye area. I took and shook up my La Roche-Posay and Thelios XL 50 Plus Very High Protection Sunscreen and smeared that over my face and neck to protect my skin during this brutally hot summer day. This is a very important step and also make sure you do any exposed skin on your body. Then I wiped that grease off my fingers so I can go on to the makeup portion of this video. I primed my eyes with Too Faced Shadow Insurance so my eyeshadow hard work stays where I want it, taking that all the way up to the brows and under the eyes too. For an eyeshadow base, I'm taking MAC Paint Pot in Painterly and I'm applying that with the Real Techniques Deluxe Crease Brush to cover up any discoloration on my brow bone and inner socket. I'm patting that into my skin and blending it down to the crease. I took my Inglot Rainbow Shadow number 111 and chose the lightest peach shade to set the paint pot with the blending end of the Naked 3 brush. And I also took a mix of the deepest and middle shades to blend above the crease as a transition shadow, tapering that down with the light shade again. Now it's time to show off my high heel shoe tape dispenser and grab a couple of pieces of tape, rub them onto the back of my hand to get rid of excess stickiness and then line them up on each side of my eyes from the lower lash line, leaving space for eyeshadow there and setting up for my sharp angled up edge. You can line it up to the same place up towards your hairline or use a brush to measure from each side of your nose up to the edge of your eyebrow. Then I grabbed my Bupanthan ointment and smeared it over my lips. I brought out my new Cryoland UV Day Glow Aquacolor palette and out of these six watercolors, I'm using the yellow and green shades. I'm going to mix these two together to use as a base for my eyeshadows. I'm using the water on myself before getting out the MAC 242 Flat Stiff Brush then using the thermal spring water to act as a mixing medium for the yellow aqua color, mixing it into my brush, then using the top of the palette to lay down the color there, and repeating the step with the green aqua color and mixing those two together on the tin. I'm lightening up the color with some more yellow, mixing a lighter chartreuse shade and adding some of that greener one so I can create a gradient on my eye as a base. I'm starting with the chartreuse lighter yellow shade and applying that to the inner third and tear duct of my lid with the Body Shop eyeshadow brush following my natural crease, making sure to pat on the color and not swipe because otherwise that removes the aqua color paint. Some tips with these Cryolan aqua colors are, you do not want to get it in your eyes. I am serious. Some of the paint managed to work its way into my eyeballs and made my eyes weep like nothing else. Anyway, I dabbed on the greener paint and blended the two shades together, merging them across the inner two thirds of my eyelid. I did have a problem though, it didn't sting or anything like that, but I couldn't continue my makeup for a while because my tears kept trying to wash the makeup all away. I didn't even notice it was happening and then all of a sudden, bleh, I ended up running out of time because of this. So I had to do some tear duct cleanup and disaster management with a makeup wipe 
but eventually it was okay and I was able to continue with eyeshadow. And then out comes the Urban Decay Electric Palette, which is where I wanted to grab the shadow thrash with the Sigma E57 Firm Shader Brush to patch over the matching chartreuse shade. Then I went over to Freak and used the other side of the same brush to pat it on and smooth out that base plus blend the two shades together. The benefit of using the same brush is you can flip it over to each side and rub over the line and add shadow as you go to blend until you get a smooth, perfect gradient across your lid. Next, I grabbed the Inglot Matte Gel Eyeliner in number 77 with the Sigma E65 Small Angled Brush, then ran that a little way along the tape and against my lash line, close to the lashes, and then I grabbed the Makeup Geek Out of V Brush to buff the product over the outer corner of my lid and up into the crease. I also ran the gel eyeliner along my tight line, giving no skin color a chance to sneak through. I blended the black base with the green on the lid and smoothed the transition into the crease using a cotton bud as well as the outer V brush, making an angled shape along the tape. Further softening the edge of the black, I went back into the Inglot Transition Mix shade from the Peach Shadow number 111. Then to cover that dark base, I whipped out Sugar Pill Bulletproof, a matte black shadow, and used the same E65 angled brush to set the gel eyeliner along my lash line. I took the black shadow along the tape and also used the Makeup Geek out of the brush to blend that over the outer third of my eyelid and up into the crease. I went back to the Firm Shader brush and Freak to blend the green with the black, just concentrating on that seam line there and I fixed up the matte black on the lash line with the angled brush after patting and buffing. Then the Sugar Pill Burning Heart palette comes out to play with the Sigma E32 Exact Blend brush and I added the shadow butter cupcake above the cut crease line, packing it on slowly to get a good color payoff and buffing it as I go with the tip of the brush all the way into the inner crease area. I took the Inglot Brow Highlight Shade again to blend out the edge of that yellow eyeshadow. Then I went back into it to buff it up towards the beginning of my eyebrow, creating a squared off shape at the center area. For the next shade, I pulled out the Sleek Makeup Acid Palette and took this neon yellow with the same exact blend brush and brightened up the inner segment, scrubbing it up into my eyebrow, as well as lightening up the edge of the crease. I took more Butter Cupcake to blend closer to the lid shades basically deepening up the crease again. Then some more blending up top with that Inglot number 111 light peach shade. And then I decided I wanted to define the crease some more, going back to Sugar Pill Bulletproof and the Sigma E47 Shader Crease Brush to give more of a cut crease feel with that matte black shadow. I carved my lid out on the lower edge and blended the black up into the yellow butter cupcake with the exact blend brush, going back between those two getting the crease where I wanted it. I went back to Freak and the Firm Shader to brighten up the lid because it got dulled down by all the crease blending and I also smoothed it towards the outer corner. I brightened up Thrash 2 and cleaned up the tear duct to make way for this Sugar Pill Electric Cute Pigment called High Viz. It's some major neon yellow with sparkles so I took some Furinay Pixie Epoxy and applied it to the tear duct with a Sigma E30 pencil brush. Then I went into the lid of the pigment and dabbed it over the sticky base. I also blended that across into Thrash getting a great gradient from full on yellow to green. I took Garnier Micellar Cleansing Water and a pointed cotton bud to clean up and sharpen the tear duct shape then peeled off the sticky tape, revealing the sharp edge. I removed the green goopy fallout. Out comes the Makeup Geek Gel Eyeliner in Poison, and I took this red shade on the end of a Real Techniques retractable lip brush and applied it along the middle of my lower lash line. I blended it out with a cotton bud to give it a soft edge. I went back in with the same brush and took Sugar Pill Love Plus from the Burning Heart palette again, patting that over the gel eyeliner to set it. Back to the Urban Decay Electric palette and I took the shadow Slow Burn with the Sigma E36 blending brush to buff out the lower edge of Love Plus along that lash line. Then I went for the Inglot Black Gel Eyeliner again on the same small angled brush and applied it to my waterline. I grabbed out Bulletproof again and the pointed crease brush to blend the outer corner of my lash line into the top of the wing then decided to change to the Sigma E21 smudge brush. Then I re-intensified the Love Plus with that lip brush blending out the black and bringing up the color while blending it into the black on the outside. 
making sure the lower lash line flowed well into the wing I created. I used cotton buds, the smudge brush, and the pointed blending one to whip that edge into shape. To make sure everything faded into my skin, I used my peach transition shades, then I cleaned off any fallout or eyeshadow that got out of hand with a makeup wipe, reshaping the edges of the eyeshadow a little too. Then I quickly did my brows in the usual fashion, taking the wax from the Benefit Browsing in Light, and then setting that with the powder from the palette using the tiny brushes that come with the kit. And I set those hairs in place with the Benefit Gimme Brow in Light Slash Medium. I added some matte black eyeshadow, winging the shape out further, blending it with the brush that had the yellow on it, and taking more black into the crease to keep it as sharply cut as possible. I reapplied the same La Roche Posay sunscreen because I took it off with the makeup wipe before. I curled my lashes nice and solid at the base for serious lift and applied a chunk of CoverGirl Clump Crusher Mascara, really working that into the roots on the top, focusing on the outer edge and coating the lower lashes as well. As usual for the face, I primed with Benefit Professional, mainly around the center of my face, blending it outwards. Then use Bourjois Healthy Mix in 51 Light Vanilla for foundation, buffing it in with my Sedona Lace 928 Synthetic Flat Top Brush. I covered up my dark circles with MAC Pro Longwear Concealer in NC15 and took the excess around my nose, mouth, plus the center of my face using the Sedona Lace Synthetic Small Tapered 224 brush to apply and buffing that in with my foundation brush. I also used my concealer brush to clean up the edge of the wing and then used the Hourglass Ambient Lighting Powder in Ethereal Light and set under my eyes and the center of my face with the Real Techniques setting brush. And I buffed that out with the Sigma F40 Large Angled Brush. Then I set the perimeter with Revlon Photo Ready Translucent Powder with Sigma F30 Large Powder Brush to make sure my face stays on while I attempt not to melt in the pit. I used that small blending brush to fade the red on my lower lash line into my face makeup and also used the black on the outer edge with the pointed one. I grabbed MAC Surf Baby Cheek Powder in my paradise on my Napoleon Paradis 20B Reflective Contour Brush, tempered that down with a Kabuki brush and then took the blush up towards my temples. Next I used NARS Albatross to highlight my cheeks heavily and my cupid's bow. I set my face with a hearty spritz of Urban Decay All Nighter Makeup Setting Spray head banging into the mist. Now I got to get going because I ran out of time but for lips I decided on MAC Lip Pencil in Night Moth and the MAC Lipstick in Cyber. I applied those in the car making good use of stoplights and the freeway. Now I'm taking down my twists and this is about day 4 or 5 I think and they still look pretty decent. So that's the finished eyes. The car lipstick application was actually okay and it worked out pretty well without any crying over smeared lipstick. You can find all the details for the products I used in this makeup on my blog linked in the description box where you'll also find any affiliate links to the brushes and shadows I use. I always say you have to grab a souvenir t-shirt or any little bit of memorabilia that catches your eye at any gig. So here I have my Faith No More t-shirt which I was ecstatic to find a red one because that's one of my favorite colors to wear. And I also really dug this Soundgarden Bad Motor Finger t-shirt. And since I enjoyed the gig so much, I really had to get both. I hope some more awesome bands come to Soundwave next year. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this this Get Ready With Me Festival Makeup Tutorial. And don't forget to subscribe for more videos and check out my Day 1 Makeup and Festival Guide with more tips to enjoy awesome music in the sun. Click the little box and see if you want to see all the tutorials or not. Yes. And here's a little taste of my experience. Shh. Don't tell anyone I shared.
Wow.